And today we have many things. I've been asked about Bitcoin. There's not really much to go on about Bitcoin right now. I'll show you the main things that I'm looking at. Um, we've traded down to the 10,000 uh, 900 and under number down here where I bought and uh, you know I've been a seller and I hedged some over here and now I'm just in basically waiting mode because there's two things that I'm looking for and it's not changed since last week's um, uh, uh, video uh, so there's not really much to go on uh, about this if we look at the big picture here, here let's go to a daily and you can see the big picture uh, again uh, I was a buyer as we went under the 5,000 area and you know then we went back up all the way to the 10,000 then meandered around here created one two three four and we're either going to do one of two different things the highest probability is that we continue upwards into the winter uh, for five, which is in the 14,000 range. And we break through here. But that's not, that's a probability. I want you to understand, I don't predict the future. These are all probabilities. So that's going to happen, or we're going to fail here and then go down to the under 8,000 level. So we could fail here, go to the 8,000 level, or we could fail up here and then go back to the 8,000 level. Those are the highest probabilities. Until this gets back to this level down here, um, the chances of it breaking out above the 20,000 level in the month or years to come is reduced. It's very low. It's not as high. So we'll, we'll go over and see what happens with that. But those are two scenarios. So we're figuring out right here if we're going to be going upwards or going down. Uh, that's basically what I'm looking for. And ultimately, I'm targeting under 8,000. Those are the statistics. That's nothing I can do about it. And I'll repeat that to you over and over again, but it's not going to change. Let's go to the trade that we had on SNX. The short-term trade worked out. Um, uh, you know about this earlier. When I called it from here, and it went right down perfectly. I think the exact low was right there was, uh, yeah, 46. That was just minorly under the 172.8. It had perfect geometry, it had perfect volume. Uh, the volume is the, one of the key metrics that I use. There, there's a bunch of other numbers that you can't see, um, the way their movement is and the way the pattern, you know, things that aren't visual, like a chart, you have bars and so forth. But there's a bunch of other combinatorial values that you don't see that made this trade very high probability. And um, sure enough, uh, it ran all the way up to here and uh, dropped and then ran all the way back up to here. I exited 50% above the 42, 44 area and the rest of it above 70. Let me show you what I was looking at last night when I was um, exiting. Let's go to a short term chart. Um, last night, it did some interesting stuff technically. One of the things that I look for for exits on a trade uh, is I, I go to, I reduce the time value. So I went to like a five minute chart here when I was watching it. It hit my target zone right here above 455, but it wasn't an exit yet. Um, it created the first divergence up to the 69, 70 area right up here. Uh, this is what I was focused on. Very strong move. And then it dropped and then spiked back up and created the second divergence. This is where, you know, I was, it was telling me it's probably time to exit. I waited for the signal, boom, 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 and then it did break, and the 70 level and above, boom, good exit, end of story, great trade, and uh, then it broke down, and where are we right now? We're meandering around this, this whole area now on a longer term chart. It could very well get all the way back up to here and maybe even higher. But don't care, the trade's over with. Uh, when you do 30% ROI in five days, that's not bad for a single trade. Um, so that was a great uh, trade and I put in a larger amount that I would normally for a big you know, trade like for BTC and, and uh, maybe Ethereum. 
Um, so you doing that with a little shit coin like a little uh, SNX or some of the others, uh, kind of. But it had great volume. I, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I I like this coin. I also added to another position here um, when he hit 350 as well. But that's for the other trade, which has nothing to do with this trade. This trade is just by itself. This is your dollar cost average that I'm targeting for later on in the year and seeing if we get above these highs and go from there. So you know that one. This trade separate from this. Neither of the two have anything to do with each other. Um, so there you go. So we got SNX and other interesting things in the marketplace. Let's take a look at um, uh, Chevron, which I like to trade. Uh, we broke under the $80 level. You can see where it turns into resistance right here as to after we broke under it. Uh, it tested it and then broke back down. Now, ultimately, I'm buying under 75. So the 74, 72, 70 will be my next, and 68, and on and on and on. You can space it a dollar or two dollars, uh, but generally, you know, I like to space it uh, on this one about two. Uh, other than that, um, I will be targeting when you know back for us to test in a larger after we break down uh, back to the you know this area up here to sell it, and uh, it's maybe not as interesting of a trade. What would be more interesting than uh, that? We got silver. Uh, I've been buying silver as it's gone under 23. That was my main thing here, buying it here, and then 22, and then 21 if it gets down there, and on and on and on. I don't mind buying silver. It's the perfect hedge, and I don't have a very good forecast for the stock market and whatnot after the election. Uh, there's so much money that is now going to be inflated. Uh, it's going to be an ugly time for stocks in the, the year and we'll see after the election, but you'll see what I'm talking about. It ain't going to be pretty. And uh, uh, stocks should stink. They're going to become stonks, as people like to call them. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's my... It's just... It's statistically very probable. It's not going to be pretty next year. Um, but uh, there's silver. So that's a great hedge. And again, my target... It's going to be all the way up here. I'm going to be looking for the mid 30s and above. And I think I'm going to get that within the next year. And it's going to be a great trade. Um, other than that, <laughs> what other? Th oh, Tesla. I can't forget Tesla. Tesla is another one. No. Uh, Tesla. Uh, you, you know the trades that I've had on this. Uh, I had the technical trade that I dollar. This was a great trade. Um, it's super overvalued, uh, but that was a technical trade. This over here is now a fundamental trade. Uh, they did not do the million mile battery. They gave us really sloppy, haphazard um, presentation, and it, it seems that they don't have their shit together, and they're more in experimental mode. Uh, and more into manufacturing and just your normal everyday stuff. They, they did not, uh, Elon Musk is no Steve Jobs. He just, I, I don't know, he's kind of a dipstick. I think he's smoking too much weed. But um, he really, really, uh, he messed up uh, is the only thing I could say. And uh, outside of that, they're <laughs> 300 times their, their price earnings where most car manufacturers are, um, in the 30 range, let's say, at a, a high valuation, you know, above 30 is good. Um, so they're ridiculous price. And what am I going to target for this? Well, I'm going to look for under 200, and ultimately maybe even 140. Um, so uh, that would be nice if uh, we get a big move down. Uh, again, this is probably going to wind up being longer term because of the fact that fund managers like it right now. But once the election is over and we go into uh, next year, you know, next May especially, it could get ugly. And I, I think people are just going to come to the realization that this, this is just not worth what it is. And they kind of hid some stuff too. 
they had negative uh, inventory and um, pricing in in the stock. You know, and they didn't say anything about this. It's almost like they were trying to hide it, and that's not cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think certain groups of investors are going to realize, oh shit, uh, we're stuck in this one. We might want to, you know, lighten up. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I like it. It's a good short. It's a good hedge. Uh, the only other thing is my AMD. I have. I believe that's going to be going higher, and I'm holding on to that, and uh, that's my one long in the market that I really like, and uh, hmm, what else? I believe Beyond Meats should go higher as well, longer term. Um, hit the resistance zones, but now I'm going to look for, you know, in the future, maybe we'll get above the two to, and break out of the highs here. Um, eh. Uh, and not a big position, but uh, one that I, I've traded this one several times and done very well. So uh, I'll just hold and uh, wait to see what the you know it does and so forth in the future. Um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I don't see any coins that I want to trade at the moment, but if I find another one like the S at X play, uh, I will let you guys know. Other than that. You guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you later.